So, I just saw the first episode of the first season of Clone High, and this will be a review of both seasons, new and old. Um, yeah, uh, for starters, I see why I wasn't ever able to see it, because it, it, it stopped airing before I was born. <clears throat> not, not too much before I was born, but it did. It stopped around 2003, if I can, you know, if I'm looking into it just about right. I think it was early 2003 when it stopped. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't born until around 2004. So, yeah, <clears throat> that, uh, yeah, that makes sense. But this was, <laughs> this is good. I like this. Um, I'm excited. This episode is mostly introducing the characters and their dynamics and how they, you know, interact with each other. And it did it well. And, all, you know, st like I said, establishing all the different characters for this season. Great job. Um, <laughs> the humor is something else. Um, it, it, it's, it's like very British flat. Or the office. Or like sitcom flat. Just like cartoon zany poom out of the middle of nowhere. I'm like... It, there's something random from ether just summons into the screen and you're like, where the hell did that come from? And then it just goes back to like, and nobody acknowledges it. It's, it's absolutely hilarious. Um, and the character dynamics look like they're going to be absolutely intriguing. So I'm really excited. This is this it's a good start to a new series uh, for me. This, you know, new series for me. Um, yeah, no, this is this was funny. I enjoyed it. Well, this second episode went absolutely batshit insane. This was nuts. This was crazy. They had paint and pancake batter be a promotional product for the school to have riches and dangerous extreme extreme stunts and they had like these marketing people who are all of the, like extreme extreme oh, i have a life crisis that wasn't what they said because i don't want to spoil uh too much because this is funny as hell they had marilyn manson do a thing about the food pyramid which is not even accurate anymore because what the hell did I watch? <laughs> There's so many more jokes that are like slow build up slap in the face. It's really, really slow. And if you cut it off, it would have been really funny, slow joke. But they kind of like hold it there. You're know, like, okay, was that the end of the joke? And then slap at the end of the, you know, it just throws the zinger of the joke right in your face. And you're like, whoa, okay. Um, yeah, this was nuts. It was good, though. It was really funny. <laughs> uh, I am thoroughly enjoying watching this. This is a great series. Um, yeah, I, I highly recommend this series so far. And so far, this is my favorite episode. Granted, only got one episode to compare it to, and that was a, uh, you know, the first one. So, yeah. No, this is, this was great. <sighs> Well, this episode was about ADD and ADHD. I'm not trying to laugh because of ADHD and ADD, but in this episode, it's trying to inform us that it's not a disease, which is admirable. Um, oh, sorry about that. Uh, that's another video being finished with the uploading on the Xbox end. Um, <coughs> this is weird. This is such a weird show. There's a musical number out of the middle of nowhere with tons of false information. And the ending... I'm not going to say a plum up comes out of nowhere. I mean, there's some build up, but... Wow! This series just really knows how to bring, like, just throw things at the wall. And Tom Green's in it. Tom Green is in this episode, and, um, well, he's Tom Green. I don't want to talk about him too much. He honestly scares me a little bit. 
I'm pretty sure I have ADD or, or ADHD, but uh, a lot of this is wrong. And I sure as all hell don't quite act like Tom Green. This is a weird episode. Um, yeah, I don't know what the hell this is. Or tell, the, the hell this was, I, I guess. It's just very, very strange. So in this episode, they had a football riot that ended in a film festival somehow, um, because more money through film festival? I, I really don't know. Um, there was a ton of subplots going on, including uh, the professor wanting to impress his bosses. That kind of worked out. That one was kind of meh. I, I, um, film festival idea was really neat. So far, this is one of my favorite episodes. Not one of the funniest on the laughs, but... Uh, I like the character depth going into this. Some really odd things. I don't want to say too much because they can. My favorite things are part of the jokes, and I don't want to ruin those. Um. Somehow this isn't the oddest episode, but uh, when it gets odd, it's very odd. So this episode had an evil SAT bot, um, which was trying to take over the world, which was fueled by pencils. That was interesting. Uh, had a drag race. That was interesting. Sleep deprived Abraham Lincoln squishing a car of panda bears. Well, that wasn't exactly on my checklist, but hey. And then we have a twist ending, which seems like there's a lot of these in this episode. Uh, in Sorry, in this series. Um... Yeah, this was weird. Not nearly as weird as the other episodes. This one seems pretty mundane. Um, compared to everything. It seems like they're slowing down on the uh, absolutely bombastically weird. Uh, maybe I'll get slapped in the head by the next episode. Who knows? This one's been one of my least favorites. Um, weird Nazi jokes. Well, kind of. They're not exactly Nazis, they're mutants, but they have like a whole thing that's like the Nazi colors and it's trying to be kind of Nazi. It, it's a joke, but it's it kind of felt flat. Um, and uh, basketball. Eh. This is a very eh episode. Whole um, girl trying to get into basketball, but the boys won't let her, sort of thing. It, eh. You're a meh episode. Um, so far, my least favorite episode of the series. Uh, but it, it was alright. Um. Yeah, this one was alright. So, I just watched another episode, and uh, it was lame. This is a, yeah, it's, well, I don't know. The, the Gandhi and uh, JFK th rapping thing was pretty funny. And I guess the twist of the... Well, I don't want to say the twist, because it's a... You know, I want you guys to watch the series on your own to say it, but... Saying the twist kind of ruins it. Um, the whole beach party parody thing. I think it's supposed to be a parody. Oh, no, I mean, I'm not the guy who watches that type of thing, but, you know, maybe they're really like that. I don't know. I wasn't even born when this series was coming out, so, you know... Um, maybe they were like that back then. Who knows? Uh, but this, yeah. Yeah, it was okay. It was okay. So this episode had Jack Black, but he didn't call himself Jack Black for a lot of reasons in this episode. And it was like a musical episode about smoking raisins. With Jack Black. This was wild. This is my favorite episode for a lot of reasons. The music was incredible. Like I, I like, I should probably find it, uh, cause that I, that was good. That was that was fun to listen to. Um, wow, and the whole Gandhi subplot, fucking trippy. That was weird. 
It was just really weird. <laughs> this show is weird, but that episode was incredible. So this episode was about people fighting and learning to, uh, you know, have their differences without being overly um, abrupt with their fighting, I guess. I don't know. Ended, ended with a giant pie fight and the rain washed it away. It's kind of a middling nothing message, but there was a lot of funny jokes in this one because of that. It was like, okay... What are you trying to say again? And, um... Uh, Joan and, uh... Cleo are living together. So that's some. Uh... Wow. It was a... It was a different episode. That's for certain. Still think the, um... The Raisin Rock Opera episode was better. Which apparently, they put them in reverse. Um, on a Max. They swapped 8 and 9 around. Uh, what's listed as 8 is supposed to be 9. And vice versa. But, yeah, no, it's... It's bizarre. Flapstick was really good, though, in this one. It was incredible. But, uh, yeah. Raisin one's still my favorite. This show is really good at doing parody. Um, they had, like, a parody of a really heavy and dramatic episode of a character dying and all the, you know, everything that goes on in a drama or a TV show when a character dies. It's like this character that was just introduced in the episode and they make a bunch of jokes of, about it. It's really good. It's really funny. And they have a whole thing about littering. I mean, he dies from litter. <clears throat> Not like kitty litter, but like the paper, um, paper and plastic and yogurt cups and things like that um and it was it was dark like jesus but uh episode is honestly pretty funny because it's like trying it like it's taking itself so seriously but it knows that it's you know this is kind of cliched and overdone but yeah no, it's pretty, it's pretty good. So in this episode, it has Snowflake Day. It's very bizarre. It's like semi, it's not like Christmas. It's not, it's a new holiday. It's, and it's making fun of holiday specials and a lot of holiday traditions. Not just one, a little bit of all of them got a weird cannonball thing and Abe's face keeps getting cut up in this episode it's, this episode was hard to watch it just felt mean spirited and just ugh. I don't like this episode this episode was really hard to watch I would recommend skipping this episode in fact the other ones were just boring this one was genuinely hard to watch especially Abe getting his mouth cut up multiple times it's like ugh like noises and oh god it's just yeah this episode is dreadful um yeah i didn't like this one so i just got through watching the f season finale of clone high and it was really good um yeah, uh, this is a show I would want to rewatch, and I see why people want a continuation. There have been some dud episodes, but, um, you know, a lot of TV shows had a lot of dud episodes at the time, so that's not exactly something they'll hold the entirety of the show back for. A lot of the reason it got cancelled was Gandhi. Um, 
And so, yeah. This was good, though. This episode had a lot of twists and a lot of funny moments, and it does leave off on a pretty good cliffhanger. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much, because this is, I mean, this has the most uh, twists and turns in the episode, like in any of the episodes. This has a lot more dry humor for the last two episodes than the first that, well, than most of the other episodes were really wacky, zany, and some dry. This one's completely dry humor. Um, mixed with some twists. Uh, sorry, I'm saying uh a lot. It was good. I like it. I liked it a lot, and I can't wait to, um, be looking at the reboot after our short ad break, which we'll be playing right after this. J. Chili Inc. The style that even Abraham Lincoln would like. J. Chili Inc. has great styles that would fit Abraham Lincoln, whether it be the old, or the new, or even JFK. Not exactly the president, but, you know, like the one we were just watching. Just to make it clear, on, on all the fronts for all this. It looks so cool that you'll feel like you're frozen in time. It's absolutely immaculate to the point where everyone who sees you will, will, will want to, you know, look at the shirt because it's pretty cool. You honestly might feel sad if you don't have any of the clothing. J. Chilling Inc. Chilling with good clothing at a chilling and good price. So I just saw the first two episodes of the next season of Clone High, and eh, it really seems like there's a lot of stuff they're trying to shove in from modern, like, modern day to try to convince you it's modern, rather than just telling a story, and if something, you know, comes up that's a little newer, having it there, they're trying to center stories around it and it feels kind of forced. The voice acting is... It's mediocre. The whole... Um, JFK, Lincoln, and Joan, and Cleo thing is still... Um, Cleo. Uh, it, it's still going on. The new characters are incredible, though. They're they're really funny. They have got to be the highlight of this, uh, this this season so far. Uh, that and Abe, but Abe didn't get much screen time in either of these. Yeah, so far this is really just meh and awkward. But I think maybe by the end of the season it'll get better. Maybe. Episode 3 was good writing, good plot, but wasn't all that funny. I didn't find myself completely bored, but <laughs> most of the jokes I just found really dull. So far this... This season isn't impressing me at all. Other than the new characters. But even then, just very, very meh. This Homecoming episode was actually pretty funny. They have a lot of really good jokes. Some corny ones. Some that I've heard a lot of times. But they're not bad jokes. And I did laugh at them. But this one got a couple of chuckles. Um, the plot was really entertaining. I liked the whole crown thing, and the intro was bizarre, but hey, made it all the funnier. Um, this is my favorite episode of this season so far. It's a good one. This one was weird. It, it, was, it had Twister musical... That was, that was the main thing. It involved most of the characters. Um, subplot was kind of, like, congenitally tied into it. 
because they were trying to stop the play. It, it didn't quite work out. One wasn't, wasn't nearly as funny, but now uh, JFK kind of likes the, uh, the uh, person who made the play. Uh, I can't remember the names worth the crap, to be blatantly honest. Um, but it's the one with the the purple hair. Hell, the uh, the this shot with like the flames in the background. That's from the episode I'm talking about right now. Yeah, it went bad. It's mildly amusing. I I'm not a huge musical person, so this one didn't quite grab me as much as the rest. Um. I like the Jack Black episode, but, you know, this one was just kind of, eh. Episode 6 is really, really good, but it's just tying in subplots from previous episodes. Because now it has a straight-through story. Um, there was a bit in the last season, but uh, this season seems to have a lot more. Yeah. Um... It was a good episode, but there's a lot of context that you would need to watch the other episodes to uh, understand, so just watch this one. Um, it looks like it'll have uh, effects in other episodes. If I need to, I'll explain uh, as the next episodes go on, but uh, pretty good, but mostly just continuation of the other pieces. So episode seven had the um, the professor snorting things, like everything. I mean, he even snorted a tiger and a carpet and stone pillars. Just told. I know it's a cartoon, and cartoon logic applies, but wowie, Jesus. Um, and then Joan and JFK broke up. Abraham Lincoln wore a top hat at the funeral. That was something. And the board wants to uh, keep Joan and JFK as a power couple so they can use them as a, like, uh, like leaders in their evil plot. Alright. This is, a. Uh, it's getting interesting. I quite like it. This is a good episode. So I just got through watching the um the uh, uh like what is it the eighth eighth episode and it's all about the couples and sex ed which is like a really really bad form of sex ed they have like this weird musical with oystermen called. Something I'm not going to say, because YouTube will take it in the same way they mean to write it, but it's like a double standard joke sort of thing. I don't... Ugh. This one was just grown-worthy. Stuff with the, the, the new couples was kind of nice, though. That was good, but the jokes in this one were just grown-worthy. Story beats are awesome, though. I'm enjoying the story of the characters, but the jokes just aren't hitting anymore. So I just saw the final two episodes and the eighth, sorry, the ninth, ninth, there's ten episodes, so ninth episode was amazing. I love the backstory and why he calls everybody, like the robot calls everybody Wesley, amazing. Actually was really well written and the, like the references to animation were spot on. It was amazing. I loved it. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite episodes in the entire franchise. The only one that beats it is the Jack Black one. But that's just because I'm biased towards Jack Black. So, you know, that's that's a personal bias there. Uh, but it is really, really well done. And the final one is Clone College, but it's like a giant death maze with Michael Bolton. Fuck you, Bolton. I kid. That's a two and a half men joke. Uh continuing I, I said that throughout the whole episode because of two and a half men anywho yeah so Joan of Arc uh knocks all of them out we get one mention of Gandhi <laughs> they wiped uh they wiped the memories of Gandhi and left left them in the freezer I don't know whether the, the end of the episode made it restore the memories I think they're playing fast and loose with it um we'll find out 
in May, because apparently the next season's in May, I'm gonna watch it. These last two episodes were incredible. They, they were really fun. Um, yeah, I can't wait for the next season. It kind of left it on an open and vague ending. Uh, so, that's kind of good, but it kind of felt like, eh, because of that. But, it, I'm excited. It's it's a good show. I like it a lot. That was a, uh, a great show, in fact. Uh, and I am excited for the next season. And I hope you guys enjoyed my review that was a long time coming. And you have a good day.